rules in order to represent there on the east side. Oh hi. It's been five months, hasn't it? Well, I'm back. I am the boss of a new gang called the F13. As you can see, I bought me a new car. And yeah, nothing has changed besides the boss of the F13 gang. So yeah. And as you can see, I'm riding school. Like normal. Wait, distributing things that let's say are the opposite color of black. We're trying to join for today. Well, in the late 1990s, they decided that they could help each other out and increase their profits. This is when things got crazy. The year 2000. While F-13 and East Coast are in business together, F-13 pay a group of 6-8 East Coast members to transport something for them. They would give them a car which contained 200 to 300 keys in it. And when I'm talking about keys, I'm, you know, the things that open the doors. That's right, YouTube. And for those who don't know, that is a ton of money. Like, life-changing money. Well, the life-changing money part, that's exactly what the East Coast guys thought as well. They thought that this could change their lives. So instead of transporting it, they decided to keep it. Well, the Florencia leader named Arturo Castellanos, he would get news of this, and he was not happy about it, to say the least. Now, of course, the money was lost, but he would also take it personally. The disrespect shown to him and his guys was not to be tolerated. And this is when Florencia would spark everything off. It became on site. Every day was hectic in South Central LA. So let's cover some of the important events. So on some unrelated stuff, Arturo Castellanos would end up going down and he was sent to Pelican Bay. And this is where he would make his orders. He would order a cleansing of the East Coast. Interpret that how you want, but I think I know what it means. One thing about F-13 is that they use words that I'm not going to say. And for a while, they would graffiti it all over the neighborhood. For F-13, anyone who even looked like they could be East Coast was a green light. And this led to many random acts. October 11, 2004. Three men, Emmanuel Romero, Mario Marino, and Edgar Navarro would meet up. Marino would be driving, and he pulls out a big thing and says, Let's do this. So they drive all around the East Coast area and decide to head down to the 8-9 East Coast. They go to the corner store and see an older man outside. That's when Marino hops out and BAM! Hmm. Daryl Denard was a 53-year-old grandfather who happened to be homeless at the time and had nothing to do with East Coast. Either way, East Coast was not happy about it. November 12, 2004. Edgar Navarro is hanging out on the corner of Randolph and Holmes in Florence. That's when a car pulls up. BAM! This was a big deal, especially because Navarro was only 16 years old. So Florencia would not be happy about this. And remember, for them, as long as you fit the description, you count. November 27th, 2004. A 28-year-old man named Marion Miller was standing on Firestone Boulevard in the Florence area. And just like Daryl Denard, Marion Miller had absolutely nothing to do with the East Coast. He just happened to live near the area. Well, either way, a car would pull up and bam. BAM! For a few years, everything remained hectic. Every day in the neighborhood brought a new incident. And these reckless acts by F-13 caused the feds to take notice. That's because this was no longer street activities. Touching civilians crosses a line that should have been drawn. And the crazy thing about it is for East Coast, this wasn't even their only rivalry. They had rivals all over South Central. Well, everything would lead up to Operation Joker's Wild, the largest takedown in American history. Turns out the feds had been tapping Florencia for over a year and collecting everything that they needed. October 16, 2007. 102 arrests were made for hundreds of charges. And here's how it would turn out in court. Now let me get into my DJ Vlad though. The feds have a 98% conviction rate. So of the 102 F-13 members... So he told you about vampires? Yeah. yeah. F-13 members, how many do you think got convicted? 
96. That's 96 of the 102. That's 94%. So congratulations, Officer Vlad. That's close enough. Despite the big takedown, the new generation would carry on the same rivalry for the next 13 years. There are countless events that took place over this time period. Someone should write a book about it. But 2020 brought some change to the community. So is it still going up? Well, everything's good now. That's good. Yeah. That's good. But you know, how long that's going to last? Hey, as long as they keep on uh, having a dialogue, which they do. Um, that's the main thing. Dialogue and, and motherfuckers just, it's about respect, man. Uh, that's how it should be, like the, like old school back in the day. Yeah. Before, before, it, before it get ugly, you know what I'm saying? You highlight somebody, you probably get a hold of it. You know what I'm saying? Well, we got to talk about this because last time we were on camera, Flowers. <laughs> but, but there's been some dramatic developments in the last year and a half. Yeah, I mean. Between y'all hoods and, and uh, after team hoods. What was going through your mind when, when you heard that it was going down and the discussion was taking place? I mean, the day I got the phone call about it, I'm not gonna lie. Huh? Like, the nigga didn't really. I didn't respond well, but I think about it. Like, I'm older now, I got kids. And it, it's a chess move, and it's a good one because I'm born and raised up here. And, you know what I'm saying, I've been taking my kids up to Bethune. I'm walking to the store and shit, shit that, you know what I'm saying, I would, I'm still on my toes, but, you know, I, it's, it's comfortable. I run into them going inside of the store, it's, you know what I'm saying, it's Florence, East Coast. It's what it is, they happy just like we happy because, like, everybody growing up, we getting older. But it's better now, you know what I'm saying? It's strategically good. Were you able to talk to any influences, like on a one-on-one? I was there. Yeah. I was there. I was at the. I was at the meeting. So it, it was it was a good thing to see. You know what I'm saying? You still had certain people on both sides. You know what I'm saying? What you feeling? It didn't be really good. Either, but I mean, by my understanding, it started in the pen first. You know what I'm saying? It, it started in there first. Out it's been good. Like that shit is it's, it's an enjoyable, it's a good feeling when you born and raised over there and you had to walk them streets. Like that shit was cracking every day. So to be able to walk into a store with you know what I'm saying, not really you know what I'm saying? You be prepared but not really but your mind is not really on that shit like it would be four five years ago. And it's lasted, what, it's been, what, two years now? Man, I've had so many niggas tell me when that shit happened, it wasn't gonna last. I heard that shit all the time, that shit wasn't gonna last. And it got tricky, but it's lasted. And now I feel like from progressing and being the bigger man and looking at the situation like, okay, hey, we're all men, like, why continue this? You know what I mean? Let's make something better for the kids that are growing up and going to school. The kids that are, uh, you know, that's the future. Kids are the future. So why do we want this to continue? Like I said, that's, it's a beautiful thing, man. It is. It is. And, it, and it, it, it definitely shocked. It's, it's shocked. A lot of people shocked. I was shocked. Right. It left a lot of people in amazing. Yeah. And, and just, like you said, wondering how did this come about? You know what I'm saying? That's, like I said, I, I don't even know. But at the end of the day, I'm, I'm for it. And I'm, like, I'm, I'm happy that it is. The fact that these guys could call a truce and have peace in the Florence area tells you that anyone can do it. They even had a big barbecue together to celebrate the event. Well, I hope this taught you something about South Central LA, and I hope you enjoyed the video. of Swamp Stories, but first, I would like to thank everyone for 50,000 subscribers. To another episode of Swamp Stories, but first, I would like to thank everyone for 50,000 subscribers. <laughs> 
The supporters on this channel are amazing and you guys make it what it is, no doubt. And for those who are new to Swamp Stories, we are trying to cover the world one city at a time. So let us know in the comments why your city should be on Swamp Stories. Also, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you're new. Let's get into the video. Welcome back to South Central Los Angeles, the most legendary part of the West Coast. For this video, we head to the west side of South Central, specifically West 55th Street. Between Normandy and Vermont, you have a small section that was originally called the 5-5 Hustlers. That started in the 1980s, which is about a decade or two after the rest of LA. That's because this neighborhood was pretty nice, and it still is. The palm trees and front lawns outside of the bungalow-style homes, it's not that bad. While it was certainly not Beverly Hills or Calabasas, it was a decent area to raise your kids. Well, that all changed in the 1980s, because that was the start of LA's worst era. In order to defend themselves from the madness around them, they created the 5-5 Hustlers, an alliance of everyone in the neighborhood to protect each other. But then things kept getting worse and worse. Like seriously, it's even hard to describe. In 1992, Los Angeles had 1,092 homicides. That is about three per day, and the vast majority of them occurred in South Central. Life in South Central was absolute mayhem, and colors began to rule the area. The 5-5 Hustlers joined together with the 5-7 and the 5-8. That's when they created the Rolling 50... Pause it! Head to bed, wake up in the morning, and fucking wag school dog. Why the fuck not? Seven in the morning. neighborhood cribs. They also became allies with the Rolling 60s as well. It's all one rolling family. You five me? Wait, wait, wait. Let me try that again. For the day. You five me? Anyways, ever since the 1990s, the Rolling 50s have represented what it is to be a crib. Hey, y'all think crib we gotta do it run. Yeah, hello? Hey, boss, uh, I need you to go take over a gang territory. I text the ping boss. Okay, see ya. See ya, boss. Yeah, buddy. I lock my door. Connect. Press play. Next. Endless summer days. Turn into endless summer nights. You waiting for? Get to the wedding while now. Next. Everybody's been telling me that they've been about to meet for the last few months. I haven't talked about practice. Maybe it's time to talk about this about this. You should have knew I was coming. I was away for a minute, but now. Next. Put the GPS.
move the fuck. Day 6k game. Fuck the 6k. Go to the FK game. FK gang for wife. Fuck the 6k gang. There is no nowhere for you to rest to one. Any last words? Fuck you. Whatever you say, bitch. Kill me, you motherfucker. Do it. Whatever. Stupid ass bitch. Shit. Bosh, did you do it? Yeah, I did it. Cool, I sent some guys. Dead and now, boss. See ya. See ya. Mm, yeah, buddy, gang life. You heard me. FK gang for wife. FK gang. Fuck you talking about bad G. FK gang for why?
Next, next, next.
to a joint. Hey boys, I need you to take over and never tell toy. I text the ping boss, see ya. No problem, see ya. For the GPS, we take to the location. Fuck the Crippling Gang. Go to the FK Gang. Fuck the Crippling Gang. Go to the FK Gang for live. Fuck the Crippling Gang. What are you talking about, bitch? The FK gang for what? Fuck the Crippin' gang. We're taking over this block here. We own this area now. Fuck you talking about, Crippin' gang. Boss, did you do it? Yeah, I did it. Cool. I sent some guys to the nail, boss. Okay, see ya. See ya, boss. Head inside. Hmm. Okay. Off well computer area, lounge room, kitchen, dinner table, fireplace and the fucking patent there. Cool. 
closet, bathroom, this should be a spare bedroom, this should be my bedroom, and the balcony out there. Nice, let's head to bed. Seven in the morning, let's head out. Let's have a drone for tonight. Boss, I need you to take over another territory. Sure, no problem. I text the ping boss. See ya. See ya. Put on the GPS. with McCafe Ice Coffee. Made with our new blend, it's real coffee, real coffee. Next. Next. Second chance. What if our future happiness is memories of our past? 
Let's fucking do this. The door is locked. No problem. Blow it up. Simple enough. Let's go. Day drill gang. Go back to the UK where you belong. Fuck the drill gang. Go back to the UK. There is nowhere for the rest to run. Any wash words? Fuck you! Kill me, you bitch! Whatever you say, dog. Fucking kill me! <coughs> Shit! Fuck you! Fuck you too, dickhead. Boss, did you do it? Yeah, I did it. Cool, I sent some guys standing there, boss. See ya. See ya. Fuck. Let's head inside. Seven in the fucking morning. How are you doing? 
The gate is locked again. Fuck. Shit! I locked my car. Have a joint for the day. What if we chose to follow you, but we still had that urge? Give us four sins and let us in your well, world. God, we at the gates. We can see here and touch you, but we have faith. We know we messed up. We human and we make mistakes. So we just beg and we get in and that you'll have great faith. What if we didn't did mean it? What if the place we grew up forgot to teach us? What if we never even got the chance to go and seek it? Then what? Then what? Give it. Very kind of